All right, I got a uh, package from China yesterday, and I got these cool parts. Uh, I haven't really ever played with these uh, these type of devices before. Um, they look like transistors, don't they? But uh, they're not. So what are they? Well, if you don't know what something is, you put it on your tester. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's push the button. The button will tell us what it is. It says it's a triac. Look at that, triac. All right, so let's let's draw the symbol here. It's kind of a strange symbol. All right, so that is the symbol of a triac. So it kind of looks like maybe two diodes back to back. Diode this direction, diode that direction, and then some weird pin off to the side. And uh, you can kind of think of that as sort of that way. Um, the uh, arrows, uh, these, these diode arrows, basically tell you that it can pass current in either direction. It can pass current in this direction or it can pass current in the direction. So it's, it's bi-directional. Um, and then this is a control pin that turns it on and off. All right. And um, so, yeah, <laughs> triacs. So how do you use a triac? Um, well, you can have a load. Okay, so let's, let's say we have, some, we have some load and we're gonna put our, uh, we're gonna put our device uh, on a load. And then we'll turn it on and off. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's wire that up. Let's uh, let's see how we can uh, how this thing works. Okay, uh, let me show you this thing working, and then I'll draw the schematic for exactly what I have here. Um, the load I'm going to be using my uh, uh, my lamp here, my 12 volt lamp. And so let's uh, let's get some voltages here. Just a second. I don't have the right wires. All right, so here's some 12 volts. Let's put that on here and here. And nothing happens. And when I push this button here, it turns on. And it stays on. That was a momentary switch. I can I can take off I can take off the wire and that thing stays lit. <laughs> so once it's on, it's on. Um, and there's no way to turn it off. Uh, the only way to turn it off is to remove the power, okay? So it's kind of a strange, uh, it's kind of a strange device. And let's hook this back up. Uh, I have a resistor going. So when I turn it on, what I'm doing is I'm pulling high and I'm pulling up through a 2.2K uh, resistor. Uh, that's what that is, a 2.2K. And uh, once I push the button, it, uh, it lights up. So uh, what am I doing here? <laughs> okay, so here's our, Thing. This is actually this is actually our, our our light bulb. Okay, it's our twelve our, it's our twelve volt light bulbs, and this is this is uh, this is twelve volts, and this is ground, and uh, we're controlling it through a switch. Okay, and the switch is a two point two k resistor pulling up. Now that's the circuit that we had. So when we pulled this. Uh, uh, line here high, um, it turned it on. And then if we remove this, it still, it still stayed on. So these are normally labeled uh, anode, cathode, and grate. Kind of strange, K, with, K for cathode there. Um, so oh, they're, they're kind of a strange device in DC land. In AC land, they're a little bit different, okay? So we were applying 12 volt DC, okay? But let's run it on 12 volt AC and see and see what happens, okay? All right, you probably haven't seen this instrument uh, before. I don't think I've showed it in a video. It's, it's hidden in a corner there. It's, it's a real dark corner, you'll never see it. It's an old lab volt um, supply meant for like, uh, like a high school chemistry lab or, you know, a science lab. 
And uh, it, it's, it's a box with a variac in it, okay? So this knob is a variac, and it's plugged into the wall. And these outlets here in the front are controlled by the variac, so you can use it to change the voltage output. So it's just a variac, that's all it is, is it's a variac. But also inside, it has a transformer, so it can take that 120 volt input and uh, run it into a transformer that will take it down to 20 volts AC. So 120 volts in, 20 volts out. And that comes out down here on this connector, okay? So when I change the variac, I'm changing the high side of the AC, but that means the low side of the AC changes. So I'm able to use this as an, a variable AC power supply. So it's quite, it's quite handy. And then uh, over here, it also has a rectifier and a, and, a, and a capacitor, and it gives you 0 to 15 volts DC over here. Um, and then there are two ranges. Uh, so it's got a high range and it's got a low range. And the high range goes from 0 to 20 volts. The low range goes from 0 to 10 volts. And uh, 0 to 15 is 0 to 7.5. So high-low switch. And the switch here. So it's in the high mode right now. And it's got circuit breakers on, on, on both sides. So anyway, it's, a kind of, it's kind of a neat thing. And um, it only turns on and off with a special, special key. You have to have this special key and you put it in to keep the kids from turning it on, right? And then we flip this, we flip this up, we get the, we get the light, and it uh, means it's operating, okay? So that's what we're going to use to get our 12-volt uh, AC. Okay, we'll come back to our circuit. Um, we're going to be using the exact same circuit, but instead of... Uh, 12 volt AC, uh, a DC, we're gonna have 12 volt AC. Okay, so now we put in, we put in 12 volt AC uh, on, both, on both sides, okay? And so, what happens? Well, nothing's on like it was before, and we push the button, it turns on. But this time when we let the button go, it turns off. So it only stays on as long as we have the button pushed. Okay, so uh, most of the time, um, uh, triax are used for, in AC applications, and they're used as a switch, just like this one. And uh, if you have this line go high a certain amount, somewhere around three volts or something, I think if, it's, if there's a three volt difference between ground and here, I think it turns on. I have to read the data sheet, uh, but that's but that's what it does. Um, and so um, it is a bit. Uh, tricky to use because um, you have to have AC going on. That's what you're. That's what you're switching. I mean, that's not the hard part. The hard part is within how do you generate the signal to actually turn this on. Um, if you actually have AC in part of the circuit, then you have a DC over here. Um, Oops, I'm sorry, I can't see that. You have AC over here and you have DC over here, so this is zero volts. And this is some AC that's just not referenced to anything at all. Um, how, do you, how do you make these work? Um, do, you, do you try to ground reference your AC somehow? Or do you, uh, do you, do you ground reference to, to, to here? Um, it, 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 it's, it does get to be it does get to be a little bit difficult. So a lot of times what people will do, um, they'll have their um, they'll have the, the device here and they're trying to use it as a switch, okay? So it's coming over here and they're going to be switching something, okay? So let's say they have a they have some load. We'll put the load here. Okay, they have some load. This is our load. And then they have a transformer here. And you're trying to turn on and off the load with, with that has AC. You're trying to turn that on, on and off using this. Um, so you can take the high side and you can try to bring it around and have a switch here. That's a mechanical switch, but if you wanted to use a uh, if you wanted to use an electrical device, you would use an optocoupler. Okay, you could put an optocoupler here, and the optocoupler could then uh, do that, right? So optocouplers have a diode in them, an LED. You turn the LED on, and it shines on a, a photo tra transistor or something, and it turns things on. Well, if you use a normal photo um, 
a, a normal optocoupler it won't work but there are optocouplers that have guess what they have a triac in them as well and so they have a little device inside them that can go bi-directional um, that can pass ac and so you have a, a little optocoupler that can control ac as well but it can control really really low current ac and then you can use this guy which is really good for high currents um, so that's generally the way i've seen these used other than normal um, mechanical switches um, you can you can do it this way now you can do it with just a regular transistor but again you, you get into the problems of how do you how do you reference things um, you know if you actually do then call this ground uh, then this is plus you might be able to use a uh, a transistor and stuff but uh, they do get a little bit messy anyway um, I thought I'd get some just to play with them. But like I said, I've never played with them. I've never played with them before, never had them. So uh, I think I'll try to build up some some more circuits to figure out how to control these better with some uh, uh, with some circuits over here without having to go get one of these rare optocouplers. I, I don't really want to buy one of these. I want to see if I can do it uh, some other way. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, I thought you'd be interested. Uh, Triax, if you've never seen them before, they're kind of weird devices. Um, one of the reasons that um, one of the reasons that I decided to take a look at them was uh, I had a viewer that was interested in the power supply video that I did, where there was a power supply. They had multiple taps, and uh, it used uh, the low tap for low voltages, and then it had a. a, a you know, if it, if it needed to go up a range, well, then it had a relay, and the relay would then change from this tap to this tap, and the, or then the relay would change from this tap to this tap. Um, and he was having problems with the relay sparking, um, which, of course, they're going to spark, especially when you have a, an inductive load. Now, you can try to put a capacitor in the circuit to try to snub the, uh, the inductive load and stuff, and, and that's all doable. But uh, I looked at a schematic for a... Uh, a power supply that I have right here that you've seen before. Uh, my HP uh, 30, 3631, and it has two ranges. So it, it, it has a one, 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 it has that much. It has one, one gear shift. It has a low gear and a high gear. And instead of using relays to switch it, it uses, um, it uses the triax. So it has a, it has a, a triac, triac here and a triac here. Uh, to, to, connect, to connect things. And then, of course, they, they would have to be controlled somehow. And I think it probably uses those fancy optocouplers, but um, I need to go back and look at that schematic. But anyway, I thought it might be interesting to just see if I can switch AC with some, uh, with some triax. And if I figured that out, I'll do another video. All right, I, I forgot to mention one thing before I stop this video. You're going to be confused. Why did the triax stay on in a DC application, but but turned off in an AC application. You needed to keep holding the button down in order to keep the uh, light going on. But in a uh, uh, AC application, uh, or the opposite way around. The DC, it fired once and stayed on, but in the AC application, it, you needed to continually have uh, control voltage. And that's because the, with the way that these things work, they're, they're, they're uh, junctions. So they're a four layer diode and you need you have no carriers in there to uh, complete the uh, complete the electrical circuit once you bias it then you have enough carriers in there and then things will things will conduct and in a dc application you only have flow in one direction so once you get it going it will just continue to go because everything is biased correctly the internal biases won't change but in an ac application a uh, current will pass in one direction and then it will pass in the other direction another way to think of it is the diodes will be biased forward and then they'll be di biased backwards so this diode uh, will be will be uh, negative biased in this direction. This one will be forward biased, and this die will be forward biased in direction, but negative in this direction. So, um, this four layer diode uh, makes it such that every time the current goes through a cycle, you swap the uh, the carriers, and uh, you have to you have to uh, you lose the you lose the self biasing inside those four layers and you always have to supply this outside one so uh, one press doesn't keep it on because you keep getting these uh, plus minus cycles all the time